Montague moves me. I strike quickly being moved. I will take the wall. Any man or maid of Captain Letts. I go to that house and move me to stand. They shall be while I am able to stand. The quarrel is between our masters and us their men. My naked weapon is out. Montague. Hello? Oh, where are 
Cyrus Romeo? Saw you him today? An hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drove me to walk abroad. Where underneath the grove of sycamore, that westward rooted from this city side. So, so early walking did I see your son. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning's dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. Away from life steals home our Romeo, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humour prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young, but new struck nine. I may sound the hours seem long. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In, in love? Apt. Of, of love? As of a favour where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in its view should be so tyrannous. And rough in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should with our eyes see pathways to his will. <sighs> Dost thou not laugh? No, cousin, I rather weep. Good heart it was. But thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's transgression. Uh, Grief of mine own lies heavy in my breast, that thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou dost shown doth add more grief to more of mine own. Love is a smoke made with the fume of sighs, being purged of fire sparkling in lovers' eyes, being vexed a sea nourished in loving tears. What else is it? A madness. Most discreet, a choking gall and a preserving sweet. Ah, farewell, my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Soft, I will go along. Tell me in sadness, whom is it that you love? What shall I groan and tell me? Groan? Why, no, but sadly, tell me who. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. <laughs> oh, I aim so near when I supposed you love. And if I could mark, man, and she's fair, I love. All right, fair mark, fair cousin, soonest hit. Well, in that hit, you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She has Diane's wit, and in a strong proof of chastity, well armed, against love's weak, childish bow, she lives uncharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bid the encounter of assailing eyes, nor open her lap to sanction you from God. She is rich in beauty, being only poor that when she dies with beauty dies her stalk. Then she has sworn that she shall still live chaste. <laughs> she hath. Hmm. And in that sparing make huge waste. For beauty stirred with such severity cuts beauty off from all posterity. She's too fair, too wisely wise, too fair to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn love. And in that vow do I live dead to live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Uh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other beauties. At the same ancient feast of Capulet, sups the fair Rosamine. <coughs> That's so lips. With all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show. And I will make thee think thy swan. A crow. A crow. A crow. One fairer than my luck. The sun never saw a match since first the world begun. Tut! You saw ah. her fair, none else being by. The self point of herself beneath her eye. But in that crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid that we shall show you shining at this feast. And she shows scant shell well that now shows best. I'll go along. Yes. No sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendour of mine own. Nurse, where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Now, by my maidenhead, a twelve-year-old I bade her come. What lamb? What ladybird? God forbid. Where's this girl? What Juliet?
Now, my lord, what say you to my suit? My child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Then two more summers with her in their pride, ere we may think her right to be a bride. Younger than she, a happy mother's maid. And too soon marred, and though so early made. But who her, gentle Paris, yet her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. And she agrees, within her scope of choice, lies my consent and fair according voice. How now, who calls? Your madam. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me thou's here our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Shaped I can tell her age into an hour. She's not fourteen. I lay fourteen of my teeth. And yet to my teen be it spoken I have but four. She's not fourteen. How long is it now to Lammas tide? A fortnight and odd days. Even or odd, of all days in the year, come Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. While Susan is with God, she was too good for me. But as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. That shall she marry, I remember it well. <laughs> so since the earthquake now, eleven years, she was weaned. I never shall forget it. And since that time, it is an eleven years. For then, she could stand alone. Nay, by in the road she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before, she broke her brow. And then my husband, God be with us all, there was a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quoth he, falls upon thy face. Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit will thou not jewel. <laughs> and by my holy day, the pretty wretch left crying and said, Aye! To see now how a jest shall come about. I warrant, <clears throat> and I shall live a thousand years. I never shall forget it. Wilt thou not, Juliet? quoth he, and pretty foolish did it as her die. Enough of this, I pray thee, hold thy peace. Yes, madam. Yet I cannot choose but laugh, to think it should leave crying and say I. Yea, quoth my husband, falls upon thy face. Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit, wilt thou not, Jewel? It stinted and did I. And stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse, say I. Peace, I have done. God mark thee to his grace. Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Marry. That marry is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? <coughs> it is an honour that I dream not of. An honour? Were I not thine only nurse, I would say thou hast the wisdom from thy teeth. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then, <coughs> in brief, the valiant Harris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady, lady, such a man as all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower, in faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Harris' face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every several lineament and see how one another lends content. And what obscured in this fair volume lies, find written in the margins of his eyes. This precious <coughs> book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. Speak briefly, can you like a Paris love? I'll look to life, if looking like a move. But no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Madam, the guests are cut. We follow you, thee, we follow thee. Juliet, the county states. Go, go. Seek happy nights to happy days.
Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. I believe you have that to choose. Nimble soul, I am sort of made to take me to the ground. I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. And I am too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar on like feathers. And to bound, I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. To love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it should you burden love. To great depression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and a prick like a thorn. <laughs> if love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking and you beat love down. Come! We burn daylight home! Oh, hey, that's not so. I mean, sir, in delay. We waste our lights in vain. Lights, lights by day. Take our good meaning for our judgment sits. Five times ere that once in our fine wits. And we mean well in going to this mart, but there's nowhere to go. Why may one ask? Dreamt a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things oh, true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. <laughs> she is the fairy's midwife. Mm. And comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn by a little team of atomies over men's noses as they lie asleep. The wagon spokes are of long spinner's webs. The trace of the smallest spider's web. The colours of the moon shines watery beams. The whip of cricket bone, the lash of film. The wagoner, a small grey coated gnat, not half so big as a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a man. <laughs> the chariot is an empty hazelnut, made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out to mind the fairies, coachmakers. And in this state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream on love. <laughs> oh, the courtiers' knees that bring on cursey straight, or lawyers' fingers that straight dreamt on fees, or ladies' lips that straight on kisses dreams. For off the angry man with blisters plagues, because they're bright with sweet meats tainted heart. <laughs> Sometimes she drives through a soldier's neck. And then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches, ambuscados, foreign blades of help, fight rather than him, and then anon, drums in his ear, and then he wakes, and being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two, and sleeps again. This is the very man that plats the manes of horses in the night, and bakes the elk flocks in foul sluttish hairs that once untangled much misfortune bodes. This is the hag when maids lie on their back, presses them, and learns them first to bear, making them beautiful, good courage. This is she! Peace! Oh. Peace, Mercutio, peace! I talk is to nothing. True. I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin of substance as the air and as inconstant as the wind. This wind you speak of blows us from ourselves. The supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars. Direct my suit. <laughs> On, lusty gentleman. Right, brother. <laughs> Gentlemen, ha oh, ha my mistresses, which of you all were now denied to dance? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I'm a advisor and tell a whispering tale of a fair lady's ear, such as would please. Tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play! Till now, for swear it's sight, for I never saw true beauty until this night. This, 
Sapphire's voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, girl. What dares the slave covered with an antic face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you, sir? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe. A villain that has hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. <laughs> Young Romeo, is it? Tis he that villain, Romeo. Oh, content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. I would not the world in all the town. Here in my house do his parish, but therefore be patient. Take no note of him. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I will not endure him. He shall be injured. What, good man, girl, I say he shall. Am I the master here or you? Come to. You'll not endure him. You'll make a mutiny among the guests. You'll set a cock a hoop. You'll be the girl. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. You are a saucy girl, is it so indeed? Well <laughs> said, my heart. You are a pink box of go. Be quiet or I'll... Oh, <laughs> for light, for light. A shame will make you quiet. What? Cheerily, my heart. <laughs> Patience perforce, with willful collar meeting makes <clears throat> my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitter gall. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, Gentle sin is this, my lips, two blushing pilgrims did ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a gentle kiss. <laughs> Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which manly devotion shows in this, for saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmers kiss. Do saints not have lips, and holy palmers too? Ay, pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. Well then, let lips do what hands do. They pray. Grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. I move not. My prayer's effect I take. Thus, on my lips by thine, my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lip. Trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kissed by the book. <clears throat> Madam, your mother craves a word with you. my foe's death. Come hither, nurse. What is young gentleman? His name is Romeo, and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen, unknown, and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learn even now when I dance with all. Come, let's obey. All the strangers are gone. Can I go forth when my heart is here? Turn back, Dulla, and find thy centre out. Romeo! Oh, my cousin! Romeo! Romeo! He is wise, and on my life have stolen him home to bed. Uh, <coughs> he ran this way, and left this orchard wall. Go, from Mercutio. Oh, nay, I'll conjure too. Romeo, 
Romeo. Humus! Madman! Passion! Lover! Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Cry me, but I me. He heareth not, he stirreth not, he moveth not. The ape is dead. I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosalind's bright eyes, <laughs> by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her straight leg, her fine foot, and her quivering thigh, and her domains that their adjacent lie. <laughs> and if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. Oh. My invocation is fair and honest, and in his mistress' name I seek but to conjure up him. Come, here pigeons up amongst these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Romeo, good night! I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go then! What is in vain to seek him here that means not to be found? He jests at scars that never felt a wound. It's soft. It's soft. Stop. 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 What like yonder window breaks? Tis the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon that is already sick and pale with grief that thou her maid art far more fair. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off! It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I do both. Not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars. All of heaven, having some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. See how she leans, her cheek upon her hand. And that I wore a glove on that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I mean... She speaks! Speak again, bright angel. For thou art as glorious to this night being over my head as is a winged messenger of heaven as he bestrides the lazy puffing clouds soars upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Is but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, but not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. <laughs> Be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet so Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. And take to thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth I never will be Romeo. What man art thou that thus be screened in night so stumblest on my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am, for my name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy of thine. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either thee dislikes. How canst thou hither tell me? And wherefore? The 
tortured walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings thy all pierce these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eyes than twenty of their swords. If thou but sweet to thine proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me. Let them find me here. <laughs> My life were better ended by their hate than death proroged wanting for thy love. <coughs> By whose direction found'st thou out this place? By love. First did prompt me to inquire. He gave me counsel, I gave him eyes. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. <coughs> Else would a maiden blush to paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form, fain, fain deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliments. Dost thou love? <coughs> I know thou wilt say I. And I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. At love and perjury, they say Jove laughs. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I vow. Why <coughs> not by the moon? The inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb, least that thy love should prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Not swear. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. My heart's dear love. Well, do not swear. Though I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning which doth cease to be ere one can say it lightens. Sweet good night. This bud of love by summer's brightening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. As sweet repose and rest come to thy heart, as that within my breast. But wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? canst thou have tonight? <laughs> the exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I did give thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it, love? For what purpose? But to be frank and give it thee again. Yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Juliet! I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. A non good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard being a knight. Well, this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo. And good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honourable, thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee. Where and what time thou wilt perform the right, and all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam! I come. But if thou meanest not well, I do beseech thee. Madam! By and by I come to cease thy strife. And leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times good night. A thousand times the worst to want thy life. <coughs> love goes towards love like schoolboys from their books. But love from love towards school with heavy looks. Stromio! Is my soul that calls upon my name. Romeo. My spawn. What o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? By the hour of night. 
I will not fail. It's 20 years till then. <clears throat> I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay. Have thee still forget forgetting any other home but this. Sleep in peace, so sweet to rest. Hence to my ghostly fry's close cell, is help to crave and my dear hat to tell. Grey-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light, and fleckled darkness like a drunkard reels. From fourth day's path, and Titan's burning wheels. Now ere the sun advance his burning eye, the day to cheer, and night's back to you to dry. Benedicte, what early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Huh. Young son, it argues a distempered head, so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Or if not, then here I hit it right, our Romeo hath not been in bed this night? <laughs> the last is true, the sweet arrest is mine. God pardon sin! What's that with Rosaline? With Rosaline? My ghostly father, no! I forgot that name, and that name's woe. Well. That's my good son. Where hast thou been then? Well, tell thee, here thou ask it again. I have been feasting with mine enemies. For on a sudden one hath wounded me that by me wounded. Both are remedies in thy help and holy physics lie. Rest plainly in thy drift. <laughs> the riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my dear heart's love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine, and all combined save what thou must combine with holy marriage. And where and when and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of vow, I'll tell thee as we pass. But this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Ha! <laughs> holy Sir Francis! What a change is here! Is Rosaline that thou didst love so dear so soon forsaken? By my order. Young man's love then lies not truly in the heart, but in the eyes. Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Thou chidest me off for loving Rosaline. Now for doting, not for loving people, mind. And badest me bury love. Not to lay one in a grave, another out to have. And chide me not, I pray thee. For her I love now doth grace for grace and love for love alas. The other did not, sir. So. Oh, she knew well. Thy love did read by rote that could not spell. But come, young waverer, come go with me. In one respect I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household rancour to pure love. should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Not to his father's. I spoke with his man. That pale, hard-hearted wench that Rosalind torments him so that he is sure to run mad. Tybalt, 
The kinsman to old Capulet hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge? On my life. Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master how he dead. Being dead. Alas, he is already dead. Stabbed by a white wench's black eye. He is through the ear with a love song. The very pin of his heart cleft by the blind bow boy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? Oh, she is more than prince of cats. She is the courageous captain of compliments. She fights as you sing prick song. She keeps time, distance, and proportion. She rests her men in one, two, and a third in your bosom. The very butcher of a silk button, a duelist, a duelist. A gentleman of the first and second house. Oh, the immortal Passano! The Ponto Reverso! The Hay! Hey! Here comes Romeo! Flesh, <laughs> flesh, how art thou? Fisher by Signor Romeo, a bonjour. Here's a French salutation for your French shalom. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Tomorrow all. And what counterfeit did I give thee? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio. My need was great, and in a case such as mine, a man may strain courtesy. Nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower. Right. Well, then my pump is well flowered. <laughs> is this not better now than groaning for love? Now thou art sociable, now thou art <laughs> Romeo, now thou art what thou art. Stop there! Stop there! Thou wouldst else have made thy tail laugh. Oh, thou art deceived, <laughs> I would have made it short. And having come to the whole depth of my tale, meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. <laughs> Who is goodly, dear? A sail, a sail! <laughs> God, you good morrow, gentlemen. God, you good evening, fair gentlewoman. Is it good evening? There's no less, I tell thee, for the bawdy hand of the dial sits upon the prick of you. Out upon you, what? A man are you? One <laughs> gentlewoman that God hath made himself to mar. By my troop, gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? <laughs> I am the youngest of that name, the fault of a worse. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. Ooh! She will invite him to some supper. Aboard, 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 Soho! <laughs> Farewell, ancient lady. Farewell, lady. Lady! 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 lady. 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 What sort of merchant was this? A gentleman that likes to hear himself talk, and will say more in a minute than will stand to in a month. Now, for God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers, scurvy knave. Pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you about what she bid me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell ye, ye should lead her in a fool's paradise, as they say, to a very gross kind of behaviour, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, a very weak deal it. Commend me to thy lady, mistress, I protest. Good heart. And a faith I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, this? Thou dost not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. Beat her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon. There at trial on cell shall she be tried <coughs> and married. This afternoon, sir? Well, she shall be there. Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times. Lady! 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 <laughs> Clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Chance she cannot meet him. Not so. She is lame. Love's heralds should be thoughts which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams driving back shadows over lowering hills. I three long hours, yet she is not come. Had she affections and warm youthful blood, she would be as swift in motion as a <coughs> My word would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me. The old folks, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. But she comes up, and you know what news? Hast thou met with him? Oh Lord, why look'st thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. I am a weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. What a jaunt have I had! <laughs> I would thou hadst my bones and I thy news. They come, I pray thee.
You know not how to choose a man. Romeo? No, no, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his legs excels all men's. And for a hand, and a foot, and a body, though they be not to be talked on, yet they are past compare. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle a lamb. Go thy ways, wench. Serve God. No, no! But all this did I know before. What said he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches! What a head have I! It beats as it would fall in twenty pieces. My back. I turn aside. <laughs> oh, my back, my back. Beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. My faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me what says my love. Your love says. Like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady, dear, are you so hot? Now it cannot I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Head forward, do your messages yourself. Oh, here's such a coil. Come. What says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to Shrek today? I have. Then hide your heads. The Friar Lawrence cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Behind the Hyclodion, honest nurse for wool. Here comes thy lady. Good evening to my ghostly confessor. Romeo will thank you for us both, daughter. As much to him, else in his thanks too much. Come, come. We'll make short work. For by your leave, you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. This, this is, is the place. place. Ancient right. To shine the heavens upon this holy act, that the hours of sorrow chide us not. Our men, our men, have come what sorrow may, cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one minute in her sight gives you. These violent delights have violent ends, which in their triumph die like fire and powder, which as they kiss consume. Therefore, the love moderately, nor no, love not so, to swift arrives as tardy as to slow. These violent delights are violent ends, which in their triumph die like fire and powder, which as they kiss, consume. Therefore, love moderately, long love not so, to swift arrives as tardy as to slow. This is the place. Let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulets are abroad, and if we meet them, we shall not escape the brawl. For well, now these hot days is the max of life scary. Thou art like one of these fellows that when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his sword upon the table and says, God, send me no need of thee. And by the operation, the second cut draws him upon the drawer when indeed there is no need. <laughs> Am I like such a fellow? <laughs> come, come. Thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy. And as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. <laughs> By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good day. A word with one of you. 
and but one word with one of us? Cover me with something. Make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough for that, sir, and you will give me occasion. Can you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. In short, dost thou make minstrels of us? And thou look to make minstrels of us, look to hear nothing but discord. He is my fiddlestick. He is that that shall make you dance. Come, consort. We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw into some private place, or reason coldly with your grievances. Or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were meant to look. Let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Ah, uh, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell. See, thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me. Therefore turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee. <coughs> Far more than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love. Therefore, good Capulet, whose name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Oh, calm, dishonourable, vile submission, Tybalt! You rat catcher, will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Nothing, good king of cats, but one of your nine lives, which I mean to make bold with all. I am for you! Oh, 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 yeah. Hold, oh, Tybalt! Oh, oh, Lucretia, hold! Lucretia! Oh, Lucretia! Oh, 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 help me beat down oh, their weapons! Get him, Tybalt! Oh, Cut oh, his dog! Oh, Stop it! Oh, 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 hold the princess expressly for being banding in the room! tomorrow and you will find me a grave man. I am peppered, I warrant, for this world, a plague of both the houses. What? A dog? A rat? A mouse? A cat to scratch? No, no, a no. man to death? A braggart? A rogue? A villain that fights by the book of arithmetic? Why came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought it all for the best. Plague of both the houses. They have made worms meet of me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Romeo. Brief Mercutio is dead. That gallant spirit hath aspired to clouds. The too untimely head did scorn the earth. This black day's fate. And more days to defend. This but begins the woes that others must end. Away to heaven, respective lenity, and fire and fury be my conduct now. Tybalt, take back the villain that led thou gavest me, for Mercutio's soul is a little overhead, waiting for thine to keep him company. And either thou, or I, or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy, they did consort him here. Shall with them hence. This one is ah! Ha <laughs> 
prisons are out and Tybalt slain, stand not amazed. The prince will do me death if thou art taken. Oh, I have been gone away. I am fortune's fool. Why dost thou stay? <laughs> Oh, noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the girl, slain by young Romeo, who slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Tybalt, my cousin, oh, my brother's child. Oh, prince, oh, cousin, husband, oh, the blood is spilt of my dear kinsman. Prince. As thou art true, for blood of art shed blood of Montague. Then, Bolio, who began this fray? Tybalt, he is slain. Oh. Romeo's hand did slay. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew her. She slew Mercutio, who now the poison of his dear blood doth own. No, Romeo, prince, he was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes, but what the law should end. The, the life, life of Tybalt. And for that offence, immediately we do exile in hence. I have an interest in your heart's proceeding. My, My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a bleeding. But I have mercy with so strong a finding that you shall all repent the laws of mine. But I have mercy with so strong a finding that you shall all repent the laws of mine. But I have mercy with so strong a finding that you shall all repent the laws of mine. But I have mercy with so strong a finding that you shall all repent the laws of mine. Sold not yet enjoyed. 
So tedious is this night as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Here comes my nurse, and she brings news, and every tongue that speaks but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? I mean, what news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? He were lady. Dead. Dead. We are undone, lady. We are undone. Alack the take, gone, killed, dead. And heaven be so envious. <laughs> Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? Torture should be roared in dismal hell. I saw the wound. I saw it with mine eyes. Has Romeo <laughs> slain himself? God save the mark. If he be slain, say I, or if not, no. A piteous cause. <coughs> A bloody piteous cause. Grief sounds determined of my will or woe. Pale, pale as ashes all bedaubed in blood, all in cold blood. I surrendered at the sight. <laughs> Break my heart. All background break at once. <coughs> to prison eyes men look on liberty. Oh, Tybalt. Tybalt. The best friend I had. Oh, courteous Tybalt, honest gentleman. That ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tybalt dead? My dearest cousin and my dearer lord, who is living if those two are gone? Tybalt is gone. And Romeo banished. Romeo that <coughs> killed her, he is banished. Oh God, did Romeo's hands shed Tybalt's blood? It did. It did, alas, the day it did. Tybalt's Irish deed, Angelico, despise itself to so divine a show. Was of a book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace. There's no trust. No faith. No honesty in men. All perjured. All forsworn, all naught, all dissemblers. These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blessed be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow shame is a shame to sit. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? <laughs> Some word there was worse than Tybalt's death that murdered me. I would forget it fain, but oh, it presses to my memory like damned guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo banished. That banishing, that one word banished, and had slain ten thousand Tybalts. Tybalt's death was woe enough if it had ended there. But with a rearward following Tybalt's death, Romeo is banished to speak that word. His father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead. Romeo is banished. There is no end, no limit, measure found in that word's death. No words can that woe sound. I to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I won't dwell where he is. Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll to him. He is hid at Lawrence's cell. Find him and give this ring to my true knight and bid him come to take his last farewell.
Romeo, come forth. Come forth, thou fearful man. Father, what news? What is the prince's do? What sorrow craves acquaintance in my hand that I yet know not? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Be merciful, say death. For exile has more terror in his looks, much more than death. Do not say banishment. Here from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory. Torture, hell itself, hence banished is banished from the world, and world's exile is death. O oh, deadly sin, a rude ungratefulness. Thy fault the law calls death, but the kind prince, taking thy part, hath rushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seize it not. Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here, but Juliet lives. And every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing, live here in heaven and may look upon her, but Romeo may not. <coughs> Romeo may not. He is banished. Hath thou no poison mixed, no sharp brown knife, no sudden mean of death, though near so mean, but banished to kill me? Banished! Then, Fond mad man, hear me speak. Oh, I will talk again of banishment. I'll give thee armour to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet oh, milk. God. Philosophy to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet banished. Hang up philosophy, unless it can make a Juliet. Displant a town, reverse the prince's doom. It helps not. It prevails not. Talk no more. And I see that mad men have no ears. Why should they, when wise men have no eyes? Let me despair with thee of thy estate. Thou canst not talk of what thou dost not feel. But thou as young as me, Juliet, thy love. An hour but married, Tybalt murdered, doting like me and like me, banished. Then mightest thou talk. Then mightest thou tear thy hair out and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Arise. Well, knocks. Romeo, stand up. Now oh, hark how they knock. Romeo, hide thyself. I won't be taken. They come, they come. Oh, how they knock. What simpleness is this? Who knocks so loud? I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, then. Oh, holy friar. Oh, tell me, holy friar, where's my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? There on the ground, made drunk with his own tears. Oh, he is even in my mistress' case. Just in her case. A woeful sympathy, piteous predicament. Even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up. Stand up. Stand and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand! Why should you fall into so deep an oath? Oh, no. Ah, sir. Ah, sir. Death's the end of all. We'll talk of Juliet. How is it with her? Where is she and how doth she? And what says my concealed lady to our concealed love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. And now falls on her bed and then starts up and Tybalt calls, and then a Romeo cries, and then down falls again. As if that name, shot from the dead level of a gun, did murder her. As that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Friar, tell me, tell me when this vile anatomy doth my name lodge. Tell me so I may sack the hateful mansion. Hold thy desperate hand! Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. Unseemly woman in a seeming man, an ill-beseeming beast in seeming both. Thou hast amazed me by my holy order. I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself? Fie! Fie! Thou shadest thy shape, thy love, thy wit. 
Thy noble shape is but a form in wax, digressing from the valour of a man. And slay thy lady, that in thyself lies, by doing damned hatred to thyself. What? Thou <laughs> man. Thy Juliet is alive. For whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead? There art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee, but thou slewest Tybalt. There art thou happy. The law, who threatened death, became thy friend and turned that word to exile. There art thou happy. A pack or blessings light upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. But like a misshaped and sullen wench, thou puttest up thy fortune and thy love. Take heed, take heed. For such die miserable. Go, get thee to thy lover's was decreed. Ascend her chamber hence and comfort her. But look, thou stayest not till the watch be set. For then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou wilt live till we can find a time <coughs> to blaze thy marriage, reconcile thy friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou went forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse. Commend me to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto. Romeo is coming. My lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. Do so. And bid my lady prepare to try. Here, sir. A ring she bid me give you, sir. Hi, you. Make haste it grows very late. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence, make haste, and here stands all your stead. Either be gone before the watch be set, or else by break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua. I'll find out your man. Give me thy hand. It is late. Good night. Farewell. Farewell. But a joy past joy calls out to me. We're Grief, so grief, to part with thee. Thursday were tomorrow. Oh, I'll get you gone. A oh, Thursday be it then. Go to Juliet, ere you go to bed, and prepare her wife against this wedding day.
pierce the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was a nightingale. It was the lark, herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing cloud in yonder east. My candles are burnt out, and Jock and Day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. You must be gone and live, or stay and die. Your light is not daylight. I know it, I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales <laughs> to be to thee this night a torch bearer and light me on my way to Mantua. Therefore stay yet, thou needs not to be gone. Let me be tamed. Let me be put to death. I am content to thou all have it so. I'll say, yon grey is not the morning's eye. Tis but a pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. No, that is not the lark, whose notes do beat the vaulty heavens so high above our heads. More care to stay than will to go. <coughs> Come, death, and welcome. Juliet wills it so. How is my soul? opportunity to send my love's greeting to thee. shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep for such a feeling lost. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend you weep for. Feeling so the loss, I cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, thou weeps not so much for her death as that the villain lives which slaughtered her. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain and he be many miles asunder. God pardon! I do with all my heart, and yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. That is because the traitor murderer lives. Ay, madam, from the reach of these my hands, none but I might venge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it. Fear thou not, then weep no more. I'll send to one in Mantua where that same banished renegade doth live. Shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company. 
and then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never will be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him. Dead is my poor heart so for a kinsman vex. Madam, if you could find out but a man to bear a poison, <coughs> I would temper it that Romeo should, upon receipt thereof, soon sleep in quiet. How oh, my heart abhors to hear him named and cannot come to him to wreak the love I bore my cousin upon his body that has slaughtered her. Find thou the means, and I'll find such a man. But now, I'll tell thee joyful tidings, child. And joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they, beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child, one who, to put thee from thy heaviness, had sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor <coughs> I look not for. Unhappy time, what day is this? Marry, my child. Early next Thursday morn, the gallant young and noble gentleman, the County Paris at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear it will be to Romeo, whom you know I hate rather than to Paris. These are news indeed. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself and see how he will take it at your hands. Now, a conduit girl, what, still in tears, ever more showering in one little body? Come now, why have you <coughs> delivered her our decree? Aye, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you, wife, take me with you. How will she now? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count herself blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Oh, proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant love. How now, how now, chop logic, what is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not. Thank me no thank you, it's not proud me no proud, but Better your fine joints against Thursday next, but go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I'll drag you on a hurdle thither. <laughs> out, you green sickness carrion! Out, you baggage yell! Hello, face! Die! Die! What? Are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience to speak but a word. Oh, hang thee, young baggage, thou disobedient wretch. I'll tell thee what. Get thee to church a Thursday, or never look me in the face. Speak not. Reply not. Do not answer me. My fingers itch, wife. You're too hot. God, bread it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, work, play, alone in company. Still my care hath been to have her matched. And having found a gentleman of... Noble parentage of their demeans, youthful and nobly allied, stuffed, as they say, with honourable parts, proportioned as one thought would wish a man. And then, to have a wretched, puling fool to answer, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I pray you pardon me. But, and you'll not wed, I'll pardon you. Grace where you will, you'll not house with me, look to it. Think on it, I do not use to jest. Thursday is near. Lay hand on heart adieu, and you'll be mine. I shall give you to my friend, and you shall not hang, beg, starve, die in the streets. For by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, but thank you. I'll not be forsworn. No pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief. Oh, sweet my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week. Or oh, if you do not, make the <laughs> bridal bed in that dim monument where Tybalt lies. 
talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh God! Nurse! How shall this be prevented? Comfort me! Counsel me! What sayest thou hast thou not a word of joy, some comfort, nurse? Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing. That he dares ne'er come back to challenge you, or if he do, in needs must be by stealth. Then since the case so stands as now it doth, I think it's best to marry it with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dish clout to him. An eagle, madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. But through my very heart, I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead. For twere as good he were as living here, and you no use of him. Speakest thou from my heart and from my soul too, or else betray them both. Amen. What? Well, thou hast comforted me marvellous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father, to Lawrence Cell, to make confession and to be absolved. Mary, I will. And this is wisely done. Ancient damnation, O oh, most wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn, or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue that she hath praised him with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counsellor, thou and my bosom shall henceforth be twain. I'll to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. Happily met, my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. That may be, must be, love, on Thursday next. What must be, shall be. Come you to make confession to this father. To answer that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. I shall confess to you that I love him. So will ye. I am sure that you love me. If I do so, it will be of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. For soul, thy face is much abused with tears. The tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their spite. Thou wrongs it more than tears with that report. That is no slander, sir, which is the truth. And what I spake, I spake it to thy face. Thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. It may be so, for it is not mine own. My lord, you must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early, I will rouse ye. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. past the compass of my wits. I know thou must, and nothing may prorogue it, on Thursday next to be married to the county. Oh, tell me not, Friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, 
Do thou but call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. Be not so long to speak. I long to die of what thou speakst, be not of remedy. I, I do spy a kind of hope, which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate, which we would prevent. If, rather than to marry the county, thou hast the strength of will to stay thyself, it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death that chides away this shame, that copes with death by escaping from it. And if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris, or hide me with a dead man in his grave. <clears throat> Things that to hear them told have made me tremble. And I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. <coughs> Hold then. <coughs> Go home. Be merry. <coughs> Consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look, thou liest alone. Let not thy nurse come with thee to thy chamber. Being then in bed, take thou this vial, and this distilling liquor drink thou off. When presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humour, for no pulse shall keep his native progress, but surcease, no warmth, no breath, shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to many ashes. The eyes' windows fall like death when he shut up the day of life. Each part, deprived of supple government, shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death thou shalt continue two and twenty hours, and then awake as if from a pleasant sleep. Then, in the morning, when thy bridegroom comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. Thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault wherein lie all the kindred of the Capulets. Meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and that very night bear thee hence to Mantua. And this shall free thee from thy present shame, if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valour in the acting it. <clears throat> give me, give me, oh, tell me not of care. Hold. Get ye gone. Be strong and prosperous. In this resolve I'll a friar send with letters to Mantua to thy lord. Now give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. How oh, now, my headstrong? Where have you been getting? Where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition <coughs> to you and your behests. And I'm enjoined by Holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here, to beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Send for the county. Go tell him of this. I'll have this not lit up tomorrow morning. Gentle nurse, I pray thee leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which well thou knowest is cross and full of sin. What? Are you busy? Ho? Oh, need you my help? No, madam. We have culled such necessaries as are behoveful for our state tomorrow. So please you now let me be left alone. And let the nurse this night sit up with you, for I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again.
Where the faint cold fear thrills through my veins and almost freezes up the heat of fire. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! What should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, Vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? <coughs> no, no. This shall forbid it. Lie thou there. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake ere the time my Romeo comes to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I not then lie stifled in the vault and die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night together with the terror of a place where all my buried ancestors are packed? Where bloody Tybalt festers? Where they say at some hour spirits resort and living mortals hearing them run mad? Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's bones and pluck the mangled tybalt from her shroud? Oh, look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo. Stay, tybalt, stay! Romeo, 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 here's drink. I drink to thee. straight for he said he would. I heard him near. Nurse, wife, what ho, what? Nurse, I say. Go, wake and Juliet. Go and trim her up. I'll go chat with Paris. Hi, make haste, make haste. The prize room is here already. Mistress. What, mistress? <coughs> Juliet. My lamb. My lady.
she's cold. Her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. Death lies in her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. Oh, oh, one more time. Oh, one more time. Death that hath ta'en her hence to make me wail, ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. A curse that happy, wretched, hateful day, most miserable hour. But one, poor one, one poor and loving child, but one thing to rejoice and solace in. Child, oh child, my soul and not my child. Dead art thou. Alack, my child is dead. And with my child, my joys are buried. I dread my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think. And breathes such life with kisses in my lip. That I revived and was an emperor. Holy Manchester and Friar! Brother! Oh! That seems to be the voice of Friar John. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar? Dost thou bring me letters from the friar? Welcome from Mantua. What sayest, Romeo? How is my lady? Uh, is my brother well? Or if his mind be writ, then give me his letter. How is my lady Juliet? This I ask again, because nothing can be ill if she is well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. <laughs> Going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order to associate me here in the city, visiting the sick, and finding him, the searchers of the town. Her body lies in Capitol's monument, and her immortal heart with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's fault, and presently took her to tell it you. Oh, forgive me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. Suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence had reigned, sealed up the doors, and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was saved. Is it even so? Then who brought my letter hence to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again, and nor get a messenger to bring it thee, so fearful were they of infection. Then I deny you stand! Oh, unhappy fortune! <laughs> By my brotherhood! This letter was not nice, but of great charge, of dear import. The neglecting it may do much danger. Thou knowest my lodgings. Bring me ink and paper and hire horses. I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do impart some misadventure. Tush! Thou art deceived. Now leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. <clears throat> Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter. Get thee gone. And hire those horses I will straight. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. And see for me. Mischief thou art swift to enter the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary that hereabouts well. Late I noted in tattered weeds, meagre were his looks. Sharp misery had worn him to the no. bone. No! If I should remember, no. this should be the house. No! poison such soon speeding gear that will disperse itself through all the veins. The life weary taker may fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. What? Thou art poor and full of wretchedness. Famine is in thine eyes. Need and oppression sarvest thy cheek. Content and beggary hang upon thy back. The world is not your friend, nor the world's law. The world affords, affords no law to make thee rich. And be not poor, and break it, and take this. My, my poverty, but not my will consents. Pray thy poverty, 
and not thy will. Put, Put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. And, and if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. <coughs> Worst poison to men's souls. Come, cordial, and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there I must use thee. rotten jaws to open, and in despite, I'll cram thee with more food! Dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Will I believe? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? The lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in the dark to be his paramour. For fear of this, I will stay with thee, never from this dim palace of night to part again. Here, for here will I set up my everlasting rest, and shake the stars from this world-wearied flesh. Eyes look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips. Oh, you, the doors of breath. Seal with a righteous kiss. Take this bargain to engrossing death. To apothecary, thy drugs are quick.
I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There, rust, and let me die. This is the place, here, where the torch doth burn. What, Mr. Fancher? It's so early up. It calls our person. For my morning's rest. What should it be? That they so shriek abroad. The people in the street. Cry Romeo. Some, Some Juliet. Juliet. Sir. See. And know how. This foul murder comes. The ground is bloody. Where be these enemies? This, this is, is the, the place. place. Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate. That, that heaven finds, finds means to kill your joys with love. This is the place. And I, for winking at your discords too, have, have lost a brace of kinsmen. kinsmen. All are punished. This is the place. Glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show its head. Go hence, and have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned. And, and some punished. For never was a story of more worth than this of Juliet and her Romeo. <laughs>